What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a great week so far. Easy Drummer 3 just came out earlier this month, so I figured this would be a great time to show you guys all the new drum kits and the new features, because this is insane. For those of you who didn't know, Easy Drummer is a virtual drum set software that you can use in a variety of different ways to help you write songs, record songs, or even just use their amazing drum samples. To be honest, I'm not sure if there's many drum covers on my channel where I'm not using Easy Drummer samples, so there you go. So let's get right into it. This is the first drum kit you see when you open it. This is the main studio kit and you can just click on each drum to hear what it sounds like. Oh, yeah. They recorded a metric crap ton of drum samples for this, and they also used three different rooms, so you have multiple options for ambience. In addition to this main room, we also have the bright room, Little splash? Choina? I love that snare though. Oh! And then we have the tight room. Oh, yeah. Wow, a towel dampening the snare and the floor tom. That's that's pretty tight. Toy like a toyga. All right, let's go back to the main room kit here. So when we click on each drum. We hear it, but it also tells us in the upper left here what exactly we're listening to. So this snare is a 6x14 Yamaha Absolute Hybrid Maple. And if we click on that, we have all these other different options for snare drums that were also recorded in the main room. And what's awesome is you can also pull in snares that were recorded in the bright room or the tight room and bring them into this, or any other Easy X pack that you have installed on your computer, you can bring those drums into this main room. So let's pull in a snare drum from the modern metal pack and play it in the main room here. I like that one. Pearl Vinny Paul signature snare. And we can also go into the tight room and let's pull up one of the snares from, let's say the pop punk pack. Yeah. I like that one. <laughs> but yeah, you could pretty much do this with every drum and every cymbal. You can swap them out, you can change rooms, you can change packs. There's so many different options you can do. And that's just talking about the sound samples. This is just the tip of the amazingness we can do inside here. Yeah. Let's go over to the grooves tab. This is where you can search for pre-made drum grooves in a bunch of different styles and time signatures, depending on what you're looking for. And there is a whopping 2,500 grooves in here. <laughs> We've got all the popular musical genres, blues, disco, electronic, funk, hip hop, metal, reggae, soul, bunch of different play styles, standard, blast beat, count in, cymbal swell, D beat, double kick. Oh, you know we're gonna try to find a blast beat, yeah. We also have percussion grooves in here too. If you click on percussion on the left, this is if you want like a shaker or a tambourine, something like that. Nice, shaker. Oh, yeah. Shake me, daddy. The filters up top make it very easy to find what you're looking for. You just pick a genre, then you pick a play style, then you can pick a type, uh, straight, swing, beat, fill, etc. Then you pick your time signature, and then you can also pick what you want for your power hand. That's gonna be the hand that's either on your hi-hat or your ride or your crash. And if you wanna hear it at its original tempo, 107, you just go up here and click original. You can also switch it to half time or double time. Half time. Pretty cool though, yeah. We also now have the groove parts button up here on the right. Let's say you found a groove that you really like, but maybe the, the pattern on the hi-hat isn't exactly what you're looking for. So this groove parts area lets you separate the instruments in the groove so you can bring in another pattern from another groove. You can even audition these grooves with patterns from other grooves. Here, I'll show you. Let's drag one down here to the timeline. Make sure it's selected, and then you hit replace MIDI, and then let's click on the hi-hat to the right. And now if we click on any of these, it's the exact same groove with everything else, but the hi-hat pattern is changed. Basic jazz. Oh, now it's on the ride instead. But everything else is the same. It just, it just changed the power hand. Pretty awesome. And if we click on edit play style, this is another way we can further customize the grooves and make it more attuned to what we want. So here's that same groove in the timeline. 
Yeah. The first thing we can do is change the power hand. That's what I was talking about before. Maybe we'll go to the ride. Yeah. Or the crash. And not only can you change where the power hand is playing, but you can also change the style of the power hand. And you're also gonna get different results here depending on where the power hand is. Tight tip, closed edge, open edge. We have like variations down here, mostly closed, open sometimes. Same thing with the ride. Bow and bell, bow bell edge. muted. Just the bell. With the toms, it's pretty cool too, because you can open up to even more toms. Big toms. All toms. I'll include the little baby. <laughs> and when we get to the snare drum, this is where it gets even more awesome. Programming anything on the snare is always a challenge because it's really hard to get the same nuances that you get out of a real snare drum, right? The amount knob is pretty much the same as Easy Drummer 2. You can use it to either add or subtract more hits from the groove. But now we have an extra button just for ghost notes. Hell yes! This means you can mess around with the ghost notes in a groove without changing the main accents on it. So let's add some ghost notes to this groove. Take them away. And with only the ghost notes selected, we can change the velocity of them as well. Just boost them all. And they're not even ghost notes anymore. That's pretty good. Okay, next let's go over tap to find because this got a big improvement since Easy Drummer 2. At the top we have two options. We can either click the accents that we're looking for or we can just record a groove. Let's try it using the accents. Yeah. And it shows you here on the left under the matching percentage. That's how close these grooves are to the one that you played. It's sort of close. That one's a fill. Oh, they're both fills. <laughs> All right, let's try the record a groove option. We got the looping bars at the bottom and you just click each drum while the metronome is playing to lock in those hits. And it only shows the kick and snare right now, but it'll add more as you click on more stuff. What symbol should we do, huh? I, uh, no, ride. Let's do ride bell. All right, let's search for that. What do we got? 87% match. That sounds like 100% match to me. That's sick. This is sick. Oh, wait, wait. This one's called missiles? Okay, next let's go over to the bandmate tab. This part is actually like insane amazing. You can drag in a guitar or a bass part, maybe some keyboards, and it will come up with several drum grooves to try to match what you what you dragged in, like. And uh, yes, you heard that correctly. It will write the drums for you based on what the other instruments are doing. You can use an audio or a MIDI file. So let's use this, uh, this bass track I made just for this. And first off, it lets you select the tempo. You can either input it yourself or it gives you a suggested tempo. And I actually recorded this at 111, so it, it guessed it perfectly. Would you look at that? And now we have all these grooves that it came up with. We can, we can check them all out, see which one we like best. All right, so here's the bass by itself. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the uh, here's the first groove. And apparently Bandmate uses transient detection to decide where to put the kick drum, so it sort of follows the transients of your wave file here. And down here we have these three knobs for snare, kick, and hi-hat. And just like under edit play style, if you turn these up, it'll add more hits. So what I'm doing with the snare, you can see right there, it just added a crap ton more hits. Uh, actually, yeah, let's see, let's see what that sounds like, yeah? <laughs> Just raise the velocity of all of them again. No, they're ghost notes. 
Like I probably shouldn't even be showing you this program because it's gonna put me out of the job. <laughs> So once you have a groove that you like here, just drag and drop down to the timeline, boom. And now we can take a look at it in the all new grid editor. Oh yeah. So in the grid editor, you can see all the drum hits right here, kick, snare, hi-hat. And up here we have the humanize button. If you click this, this changes the velocities and nudges the timing around a little bit so it doesn't sound like a computer playing the drums. So let's play this groove with humanize turned off. Like the drums sound good, but like the playing doesn't have much life to it, you know? And that's because all these hits are perfectly in time with the grid and all the velocities are exactly the same. Both of those are no, no, no's. But not to worry, this is where the humanize button comes in. Let's turn it on. Oh yeah. That sounds much better. That sounds like a human playing the drums. You click on this arrow here, you can also change the style of the humanizing, since obviously we're gonna be doing different velocities and that kind of stuff for different styles. So we have half time if we're doing something like a slow shuffle. That's much softer, huh? And they even gave us a humanize button for blast beats. Let's go. All right, here's a blast beat, and this is what it sounds like with humanize turned off. Or when anyone would program a blast beat, right? Sounds like shit. So let's turn on human eyes. Much better. The snares are way quieter. The timing's a little better. Just sounds like somebody actually playing a blast beat. Not There's also three different options for velocity. Right now it's on regular. We can also put it on soft. Yeah, or hard. Yeah, a little bit harder. Then if you click on more to the right, this is even cooler. You can adjust the micro timing of the humanization. We've got pushy if you want sort of a rushed feel. <laughs> and then laid back, that's sort of the opposite. I definitely like pushy better for the metal stuff. But yeah, right in the middle, uh, normal, yeah, that's good too. In my opinion, if you're doing the metal stuff, put it on pushy. These are really subtle differences, but I feel like they really nailed just the right amount of adjustments it makes. So bravo with that tune track. Yeah. All right, this next feature blew my mind when I first saw it. Let's show you guys the song creator. It will actually build an entire song structure for you just based on one groove. This is like unbelievable to me. So you find a groove that you really like and then Easy Drummer will take that and use that groove as the main theme of your song and then fill the rest of the song with grooves from other parts that are like sort of similar, like what? So let's do one here, we got this blast beat. Okay, let's drag it into Song Creator. And just like that, it organized an entire song into different arrangements and look how many different options there are. Down here. And once you have an arrangement that you really like, all you gotta do is drag it down here to the timeline, and then you can customize it even more. And it even tells you in the timeline which MIDI grooves it gives you for which section of the song. And if we click on song parts, that gives us even more options for grooves for different parts of the song, just in case you don't like one of them. Let's say for whatever reason you don't like the pre-choruses that it gave you, so there's all these other options right in here for that. And if you want to replace it, just drag and drop. Easy, easy, easy. Even better, let's say you want to replace all the pre-choruses in the song, you just right click it and then hit replace all pre-choruses on track. Oh my God. All right, and how about that mixer tab? This has a sexy new look to it and some improvements as well. We now have little images above each channel that visually show what's going through that channel rather than just the text. And you can actually click on these images and it'll play the samples for each channel. Great. And from within the mixer, you can still change the kit presets from right in here. We can also now select multiple channels just by dragging across the text. This is handy if you want to solo or mute multiple channels, or if you want to move the volumes as a whole group, or if you want to get really crazy, you can right click and actually automate these faders using MIDI, but that part is uh, a little over my head. All right, now it's time for my favorite new feature, the eDrums settings page. <laughs> This is something I've been secretly wishing for for so long now. This makes using Easy Drummer with your eDrums so much easier. Huh, easy, Easy Drummer, haha, <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> Basically, once you have your module connected via USB or MIDI or you're through your interface, whatever you're doing, it will show up here in the top left. My module is currently turned off, so that's why it says none available for me. But once you have that selected and checked, you can come over here to this giant drop down menu and then select your module. Holy crap, they pretty much have every single module on here. <laughs> 
And what this will do is automatically map the electronic pads to trigger the correct sounds in the program. What really, really blew me away is the velocity curve right here. You can use this to manipulate the incoming MIDI hits that are coming from your module and you can set it to your own curve graph. And what this does is help you correct any sensitivity response that you're getting from the module or if you're just playing in a different style. But a lot of the times your perfect settings for in module drum samples are not going to be perfect for triggering software samples like Easy Drummer. Usually you're going to have to go in there again and mess with the sensitivity and the threshold and some other stuff. So now instead of having to go back into the module and mess with those settings again, we can just do it right here in the program and we can have a different curve for each drum. Let's go! For example, if you want some super high sensitivity on the kick drum so you can save some energy, not have to hit as hard, but you still want it blazing loud, then you'd set the curve like that. Yeah, or maybe not that ridiculous, but something like that. And maybe the opposite for the snare. Let's say you're doing some ghost notes, but those ghost notes aren't as quiet as you like. Maybe then you can set the curve like that, yeah. We also have a hi-hat pedal control section down at the bottom since it's not super uncommon that electronic drum set hi-hats aren't the most accurate, right? We have three different openness transition options down here and it's recommended that you try eDrum optimized first. That's the one that was designed to give you the most realism. These range sliders will react to how open or closed you have your hi-hat because sometimes with the hi-hat pedal, you know, you'll have it fully closed but it won't trigger fully closed or you'll have it fully open but sometimes it'll trigger closed. Then we have foot splash sensitivity. This does exactly what it sounds. This changes how it reacts when you do a little foot splash with the hi-hat stand. And once you have everything dialed in perfectly, you can save your own preset inside the software. Bam! So let's finally jump over to the kit for a minute and have some fun with these yummy new drum samples. guys, that is all the time we have for today. I hope you are geeking out just as much as I am over this new update. Easy Drummer 3 is the shiznit. I will put the link in the description so you can check it out for yourself. And we'll see you next time.